Welcome to the Plant Centered and Thriving Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Kitchens. Welcome back to the show, y'all. I'm here with my favorite co-founder of my like favorite plant-based snack ever, Small Seed Bar. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I talk about them a lot. I have them after I work out. I have them for breakfast all the time. It's just such an amazing company. So I'm here with Holly McKinnon, who is the founder of Small Seed Bar. Um, her and then her co-founder, her husband, um, also helped co-found the company. And we are going to talk about so many wonderful things, primarily vegan pregnancy, which I'm really excited to touch on because it's a subject or a question that I get a lot, um, just via social media. So I think it'll be helpful to talk a little bit more about that and kind of the common questions that Holly gets because she's currently pregnant with baby number two. Um, and by the time you're listening to that little sage is going to be in this world and he's going to be amazing. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely dive into more into that. So welcome to the show, Holly. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. Yeah. Yes. I'm so excited. And before we get into all things vegan pregnancy, I definitely want to hear a little bit more about just your story. And you obviously founded this incredible vegan company that I'm obsessed with. So I would love to hear a little bit more just about your journey kind of into veganism. And then also to how this, this company came about. I think I'm coming on five years now of I know, which is so crazy. It kind of feels longer, but it also kind of feels like just yesterday. (laughs) When I went vegan at the time, my husband and I were like slowly kind of transitioning into like a more healthy lifestyle. Like we had cut out gluten, we had cut out dairy, but he was running a paleo food company. And so I'm pretty sure everybody knows what that is, but that's mainly eating like all meat, (laughs) the paleo (laughs) diet. And this is kind of, I think when like a lot of stuff was getting shared about veganism and just like the health benefits. And I personally have never really liked animal products. Like when I was little, my parents used to have to like trick me into like eating different animal products. I never liked eggs, never liked chicken. I never liked drinking like glasses of milk. Like I didn't really like anything. So (laughs) it was a pretty easy transition for me, but yeah. So I had like started learning more about it at the same time. My husband was learning more about it on like the performance side. And we kind of just like came together and we were like, Hey, like we already don't eat dairy. We're gluten-free like we're both learning about this. Like, do you want to, like, we should try going vegan. And we kind of just like literally cut everything overnight together. I can't remember if we threw everything out of our house or like gave it to my brother or something like that, but just overnight. And we haven't gone back for us. That was like the best way to do it. It wasn't really hard transition. Like we found a couple meals that we like to eat, which we literally made all the time before we like started dabbling more into, you know, different recipes and things like that. But one of the things, which is how this company got started, is we were both working for startups. Like I said, my husband was working for that paleo company. And then I was working like three different jobs at the time. And we were both just like super busy. We never really had time to eat. And the snack bar that we used to eat, the protein bar that we used to eat had honey. And I think it had, I think it has either whey or like eggs in it, something. So we couldn't choose. So like, we couldn't eat that anymore. So we were literally just like going without food. (laughs) We'd come home and be like starving at night. And so I was like, I feel like I can make these bars like inspired off of that bar company, but vegan and healthier. And so that's kind of like how small seed came, came around. I started making them just for Shane and I, and then like, we'd bring them to work and our co our coworkers started trying them. They're like, what are those? Like, and, and they were like, these are really good. Like you guys should sell these. And we're like, mm, I don't know. Started giving them to friends and family and people were like, these are really good. You guys should sell these. And so I was like, I don't know. But Shane was like, I think like we could do it. Like we could really make this into a business. And I'm like, all right, let's do it. And we kind of just like jumped feet first into it. And we started at farmer's markets in California. And then that kind of like just over a couple months really started picking up in popularity. We got our first wholesale account. And then we were like, okay, now this is not just like a little side fun project, like wholesale is interest, like other people are interested. And that really just kind of evolved, evolved. And then we found out we were pregnant with my daughter, which is what led us to, which is what led us to North Carolina. Cause we were like, yeah, we can't stay yeah. <laughs> in California, which is literally the most expensive place to live. He had, my husband had just quit his job, like the month before. So we found out we were pregnant in November. He quit in October to help me with small seed. And he was doing like personal training on the side too. But so we were like, we cannot stay here and have a baby and have a business. And we were really excited about the business. Like we felt like it had so much potential. So we really wanted to be able to give all of our attention and energy to it. We didn't want to have to like get second jobs again. So we, we had visited Raleigh and we were like, Raleigh is like, that was cool. Everybody there was like super nice. And <laughs> 
<laughs> plant-based scene is like up and come like the people we had talked to when we came to visit they were like this is like an up and coming scene like it's not super saturated here yet like but people are interested they're learning they're loving it like so we were like let's go <laughs> it's literally we were like mm, rally's cool like let's move there <laughs> and thank goodness and you did <laughs> i know that's how we met and we literally met you like right around when we first moved here yes. because we went to your gym your crossfit gym yep and I think the owner maybe was like telling us about, oh, we have a plant-based like athlete here. And it was you. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. It's been amazing to watch it grow. And I'm so grateful y'all moved to North Carolina. And I'm so grateful you, you came to my gym because you're right. Like he was talking to one of the coaches there and he was like, yeah, we have this plant-based athlete. And like, he ended up like connecting us. And I'm yeah. so glad he did because exactly like what you were saying, Holly is like, you had this void in your life where you were so busy and you like found this product to kind of like tie you over, whether it was in between meals or even just for a meal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if you are struggling with that, you know, there's other people out there in the world who also are struggling with that. And then heck Raleigh Durham. Yes. is definitely like, I think people here are definitely like starving for like more plant-based yes. products. So yeah. And even in like the three, I think now we've been here for three years, like the three years we've been here, I feel like this community, the plant-based community in our community has just like exploded, really grown. And like, there's so much more interest, like we're getting more like vegan restaurants and different things like that. The other thing about our bar is, is that it was vegan and gluten-free which like weirdly that's a hard combination to find. Like you yeah. would think they would go hand in hand, like just make it gluten-free, but a lot of vegan things are not gluten-free, mm -mm. which makes it really hard. So filling like that vegan gluten-free market was something that's like really delicious and doesn't taste like cardboard because a lot of gluten-free, especially bars, like yes. specifically yes. in the bar category, just like are not good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. That was honestly, when, when I first tried them, I was like, oh my gosh, these taste different than any other bar I have ever had or ever bought in the store because they were actually delicious. Like this is something that I didn't just have to eat. It was like something like I actually like looked forward to eating even for breakfast sometimes like on my like yogurt or with my oatmeal, like it's a delicious bar and it has lots of protein. It just has lots of great stuff in it. So it doesn't like it's not like any other bar that you've probably ever tasted. If you haven't tried small seed bar, well, now you have to. So <laughs> yeah, you got to go out and get it. So. Yeah. 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 That was like really our goal though, is to have it, like you're saying, like not just a snack, but also have the ability to use it as a meal. So like, if you know you're busy in the morning and you're on your way to work, or even like if you work out before you go to work or whatever it is, like you have that actually like nutrient dense, really healthy, like something that's going to hold you over, not just something that you're going to be hungry in an hour, like a yes. real meal. Awesome. Okay. So in addition to that, so obviously you have a, a beautiful daughter who is, she's always being showcased on small seed bars, Instagram, and she's always eating the bars too, which I think is so cool. Um, but in addition to that, like, obviously you ha went through one vegan pregnancy and now you're currently in your second one. And I know there's just a lot of questions from listeners, from people on social media. It's like, how, what kind of things maybe you come up against or common questions that you get being vegan and also like growing a child at the same time. Like, I think so many of us are like, well, wait, don't you need to like eat meat or like, how, how is your iron? Not like, you know, bottoming out all those types of questions. So what are some common questions that you get that maybe we can uh, answer? So definitely, um, the, probably like the number one asked question is like a, is that possible question mark? <laughs> like, yes. That's the thing you can do. And I'm like, yes, you can very easily do it. It's extremely healthy. When I was pregnant with my daughter, like we had gone to the doctors and we were like, yeah, we're vegan. And it was funny because it was like when they were telling you like, you know, all these certain things you have to stay away from the things you can't eat. And she was like, oh, cause she started, she was like, you gotta stay away from fish. You gotta stay. And I was like, oh, like, let me just stop you there. Like, you know, we're vegan. So like all those things, is there anything that I shouldn't be eating? And she was like, hmm, hmm. Like, and she was like thinking to herself, she's like, actually like, no, you're, you're good. Like besides I think like bean sprouts was the only thing I couldn't eat and she was like besides like bean sprouts actually you're you're totally fine and I'm like so it's funny when you think about it like that right like they tell you you have to avoid all of these things when you're pregnant for a healthy growing fetus yet we like consume them on a regular basis for our own body you know like you would think that mm -hmm. there has to be some type of side effect to us eating these things when we're not growing a baby, right? Like if it's dangerous to the baby, why is it not dangerous to us type of thing? So yeah. my first pregnancy, they did um, do like a lot of blood tests. Like you were saying to make sure like my iron is good, like that stuff. They were tracking it much more regularly, which everything was like always good that I never had any issues with it. But between that and then like what supplements do you take? 
and I'm like a huge, as you can tell from small seed, we're like ingredient snobs, like we're ingredient brats. Like we really care about the ingredients in our things. And one of the probably craziest things that I learned about was what's in prenatals, like prenatal vitamins. Right. So like, or maybe even you could think about like multivitamins, like regular multivitamins. Like when you flip over what's actually inside a lot of the common ones are like Costco brand. They're trash. Like they're complete trash. They have food dyes in them. A lot of the ones that they gave me, every single one of them had dairy in it. Yeah. Which is so weird. A bunch of preservatives and different things like that. So garden of life is like our savior brand. Yes. They're (laughs) wonderful. I know that they're going to be clean. They don't use any preservatives. They're vegan. They're gluten-free. Like they use whole foods as the actual ingredients in their products. So I did that for prenatals. I take a vitamin D supplement, an omega supplement, like which a lot of these I take anyways, when I'm not pregnant, I just take a higher dosage now that I am pregnant. So I've been breastfeeding my three-year-old for (laughs) still right now. So three years. Um, So I've been like continuing to take like a higher dosage just because obviously like your nutrients are going through the breast milk too. So you want to make sure you're getting the proper nutrients and then like the child through the breast milk is getting the proper nutrients. I think it's a good point that like you take all these anyway, like these aren't just things that you're necessarily taking maybe just because you're pregnant. Like, yes, you are taking higher doses of certain things, but it's just something to kind of be aware of too, that this is just kind of part of your lifestyle as well. And I really, and this is definitely something that I appreciate about Shane and Holly is that they really do care about ingredients, which is again, just another reason why I love their bars is because it is like it's quality ingredients that I just, I don't even have to question or like double check the label, which I feel like I have to do all the time with stuff everything like I know. Yes. I'm curious kind of what the conversation was maybe like with your doctor, if there was any like hangups or like challenging you on maybe, you know, you should be possibly doing something else or even from like friends or family, um, what kind of like maybe pressures or maybe misconceptions that they had. Yeah. So it was actually funny. Like, like I said, when I found out I was pregnant, I was in California So I had a doctor in California. And then when we first moved to North Carolina, we lived in Winston-Salem. So I had a doctor in Winston-Salem and then I moved to Raleigh, I had a doctor in Raleigh. The doctor in Raleigh is the same doctor I have for Sage for my second pregnancy. But between all those doctors, like nobody ever had an issue. They were just like, we'll feel more comfortable taking like your blood just to make sure everything is like stable and safe. And like you and baby are both getting the nutrients you need. Like you're not iron deficient and things like that. But I think probably because I had a good track record on my first one, they didn't have to do it with this one. Not doctors. But family, like, you know, family feels like they can like say anything to you, I feel like. <laughs> yep. And like, they're not, I know that they're never coming from like a rude or mean or like place like that. But sometimes you're just like, did I ask for your opinion? <laughs> like, I'm pretty good. <laughs> I had a lot of family who not like my immediate family, but like cousins and aunts and friends and stuff like that. And even just people like out in public, like, right. Being like, well, don't you need, like you're saying, like, well, what do you do for calcium? Or what do you do for iron? Don't you need to eat meat? Oh, or like, oh, I've heard that that can have, that that can like lead to issues with the baby. Is your baby going to be malnourished? Maybe your baby's going to be born only five pounds. And I'm like, my baby's like growing healthy. Like everything's good. And it's kind of like what you were saying with like supplements, literally nothing really changed. Like through my pregnancy, what I ate was the exact same. I just ate more. The supplements I took, I just took more. (laughs) I think sometimes people want to like overcomplicate this idea of like, I'm vegan and I want to get pregnant or I'm vegan and I am pregnant. So I need to do all of these things. And it's like, if you already live a healthy lifestyle, like you've been leading this healthy lifestyle, there's really nothing else you have to do. Like one of my best friends is vegan, but she also just had a baby a couple months ago. And she was like insanely craving meat this time, like weirdly craving chicken and like steak I think she fought it for a long time but she was like there's maybe there's a reason like my body's craving this right and I'm like trying to tell him like it's probably like you're craving an actual like nutrient that's in that meat right like maybe like you're iron deficient or something but yeah. to each their own sure and and she did like she ate it while she was pregnant and then she now like she's she had the baby and she's not eating it anymore you don't need to tie yourself to like this thing of like I'm vegan and I need to do it and like it needs to be perfect because it doesn't need to be perfect we each have to just do what's best for us and like what we believe is best for the baby and do not let your family or friends or doctors tell you can't do it because you can 100% do it it is completely safe and healthy the baby's going to be safe and healthy my sister just went through an entire vegan pregnancy as well 
baby's perfect and healthy. And there's a couple of things there. So even the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says that like plant-based diets, vegan diets, vegetarian diets are okay for every life cycle. So pregnancy through like being an older adult, like they're totally safe. It's doable. Like there's no harm. And with that too, I like what you said, Holly, about like, I think a lot of times we have, we just end up overcomplicating everything. It's like, oh, well now I'm pregnant. So now I need to like do all these other things. You're like, yeah, there might be a few modifications that you have to make, but there's no need to like crazily overcomplicate everything so that it is overwhelming. It almost seems like it's not even doable because of that. If you have a doctor who's not supportive of you as well. I think that that's a reminder that these doctors work for us. We don't work for them. There's no reason we need to stay with a doctor who doesn't support the decisions that we make or what we choose to do as long as we're healthy. And like their only job is to make sure I'm healthy and the baby is healthy. Mm. Outside of that, like they don't really get to judge what I choose to do. If I choose to have a vegan pregnancy, if you don't believe in that doctor, that's fine. But like, this is my choice. People do get like pressured because you, you know, you want to trust your doctor, like your doctor is a professional. So you're like, right. okay, if he says I have to do it, I have to do it. But you don't like these doctors work for us. We can switch our doctor at any time if they do not support our decision. Yep. And I think that's a great point, whether you're wanting to become pregnant or are pregnant or just in general, like, like you said, these doctors work for us. And if they don't support your lifestyle of like being vegan or wanting to go plant-based or whatever it is then maybe it's time to find another doctor that does support you. Like that's really important. And honestly, Holly, it's refreshing to hear that you had three doctors while you were pregnant with your first child and that all of them, it sounds like it really did support you and didn't like really overly question you or try to push you in in another direction. Yeah, it was actually like super super. I I mean, in California, I was like, you know, they're a little bit more open to this like lifestyle, right? But then even when I moved here, like I love Winston-Salem, but Winston-Salem's like a much smaller, like Raleigh-Durham. Yeah, you would expect it here too, probably. But like Winston is like a much smaller place where you would think maybe those doctors might be like a little bit more closed-minded or like old-minded type of like teachings, but they were totally cool there too. So I think it's just important to find like the right doctor who supports your decisions. I really do appreciate you saying too, like that this is like your journey, your pregnancy, and and you need to obviously advocate for yourself and do what you feel like is best for yourself and your baby. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's what it is at the end of the day. Like we all just want to feel best for us. And it's funny because you're talking about, are you were saying like people who may want to get pregnant? As we know, like you teach this too, but like hormones, you can really balance your hormones through going plant-based. So a lot of times, like someone may be eating a certain way, be trying to get pregnant like this whole time, right? And then they choose to go plant-based and their hormones completely like balance out and their body's like how it's meant to be. It's working in the proper way. It's not fighting inflammation. It's not fighting these certain things. And then it's like, you get pregnant like that, you know? And so I think sometimes it's funny because- there have been people who have literally gone plant-based to get pregnant. Yes. <laughs> like oh my gosh. Just to get pregnant. And then like, they're not vegan. They don't consider themselves vegan. They consider themselves plant-based because I think, you know, they understand that maybe it's not their entire lifestyle and they're not going to stick with it, but they know the benefits of their hormones going plant-based is going to allow them to more easily or more likely get pregnant. And yeah. they do, they get pregnant just, yep. So, which is crazy when you think about it. <laughs> yes, it really is. It's wild. And it's, it's funny you mentioned that because I've heard of so many success stories just with that in general. And I remember listening to a podcast, this is a long time ago about a doctor who she's a fertility specialist and she helps clients transition to plant-based eating, um, in order to get pregnant without going through like a bunch of treatment and drugs and things like that. It's like, okay, well, let's try this first, see what happens yeah. and then kind of go from there. And she has a lot of success with that as well. So it's, it's just really cool. Plant-based eating is just so cool. I know it is. <laughs> it's it's so funny because I think for me the way like I felt when I went plant-based I was like oh I'm never going back because I like I am in tune enough with my body that I literally felt so much better like such a shift in my energy my like whole mood felt better my body was like less inflamed everything like that so I'm like when you do that and you feel good and you feel great you just like, you want to stay like that first of all, but then you want to share it with everyone. You're like, come on, like you can feel great too. Like it's just such a testament of how it, how food really does have such a profound impact on our health and our growth and development and just so many other factors. And I feel like, thank goodness, there's more people out there like yourself who are like founding companies like this, having vegan kids, like, and being an advocate for this lifestyle and showing that it can be done, which is refreshing to see, because like you said, there's still a lot of misinformation and just a misconception about veganism in general, veganism and pregnancy. Like 
and so I think it, again, just, it's refreshing to see people like yourself, like showcase that it can be done. And of course, Shane. So if you're, uh, if you're familiar with small seed bar, Holly and Shane, Shane is like an incredible athlete. And again, he just showcases that you can have massive muscles and be <laughs> vegan. So it's possible, which is so refreshing. I know. I know it's actually so funny. Cause we always like joke. We're like, we hope Opal goes to school and is like, Oh, I don't eat that. And the kids are like, Oh, why? And they're like, Oh, that's a dead animal. Like something like funny, you know, like that really strikes a kid's heart. They're like, wait, what? Like, this is a dead animal. Like, yes. and you're just like, yeah. Cause as kids like that emotional, we can, we can make that emotional connection when we're older, but when you're a kid, like you love animals, you know, like, I don't know any kid who doesn't love animals and would ever want to like harm another being. That's just yep. like, kids are so genuine and they're like, they have such a big heart. Like they're so loving. We get harder as we get older, but like kids are so loving that I think if they knew like that part too, like we always joke being like, oh, we'll leak it to the class. Like, <laughs> yes, tell them what's up. That's my goal for my child to like convert all the kids in the class. Like, <laughs> well, and because Opal is your guys' child, like without a doubt, I see that happening. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> and then Sage will be next. So, I know it's going to be so funny. So yeah. good. The whole oh. revolution of little vegan kids. Yep. Yeah. It's happening oh, more and more. It's so exciting to see. <laughs> Well, seriously, Holly, thank you so much for coming on and just sharing more about like your journey, your pregnancy, your company. And y'all, again, if you haven't tried Small Seed Bar, I highly recommend it because it is literally my favorite bars. And it's not just because they're local. It's not just because I know Shane and Holly, like literally they taste delicious and the ingredients are incredible. So the link for that is definitely in, in the show notes. So definitely check that out if you want to give some a try. Um, but other than that, Holly, where can people find you, the company? Um, where's the best place they can connect with you? So small seed bar, like on any platform, that's where small seed is. And then I mostly hang out on Instagram and my Instagram is holly.mckinnon and that's where I am. I'm, and I'm always sharing stuff about like, like you were saying, vegan pregnancies and what I'm up to and like, mo like motherhood, veganism as motherhood and veganism with like children and things like that. So, yeah. Which is cool. Cause I feel like Holly is like really open and transparent about it. So it's like, if you want like a real like person to like show you what it's like to like raise kids, like be vegan and raise vegan kids and go through a vegan pregnancy. Like Holly is definitely one to follow. Cause she's not going to like, just give you fluff. Like she's going to give you the real stuff too, which I think is again, just refreshing to see. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me on too. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Until next time, keep thriving.